the Grease Man, enjoying my Labor Day. I know where I'm going today. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people be out mingling, hitting the beach, working with family and friends, enjoying the last summer. But no, I ain't going to be hanging out with any of my friends. Today I'll be remembering some of my friends. Remembering. <laughs> going to the monument today. The Vietnam Memorial Monument. I was there the other day. The lady that helps you find names came up to me and said, which one you looking for? I said, Robinson. Carlisle J. Robinson. He showed me the slab with his name. And as I stood there with my face set rigidly, staring out from behind mirrored sunglasses, she saw a USMC tattoo on my left bicep. She said, did you know Private Robinson? I said, yeah, I, I knew him. She said, you want to talk about it? I said, no, I, I don't like to talk about it. She said, come on, it'll probably make you feel... I said, no, I don't want to. She said, no, come on. I said, all right, the name on my uniform is Grish Minnelli, but everybody knew me as Sergeant Fury. <laughs> Crying Tree, 1967. A new bunch of green recruits were standing there on the, on the tarmac. As I walked out there to look him up and down, to tell him about Nam, to break him in, to let him know that this was no picnic, that there was a war on. Well, I happened to notice one guy standing there a little on the surly side. I said, what's your name, Private? He said, Robinson. I said, Robinson, what? He said, Robinson, sir. I said, what's your problem, Robinson? He said, this isn't my war. I don't have anything against these people. They ain't done nothing to me. I don't want to fight no honky war. I just looked at him and I said, let me tell you something, Robinson. We are Americans, and we don't choose our wars. We don't get to pick and choose. We don't get a menu of conflicts. We fight what we're told to fight. And we don't have any color here either, Robinson. We're all the same color. Not black, not white, but green. We are members of the green machine. We are Marines. We are Marines, Robinson. You will fight, and you will die if necessary, but you will fight. Well, my tirade, my tirade was interrupted. Well, they sent a suicide attacker. They did that every now and then when new recruits landed. They sent some guy out of the bush with nothing but a machete to run straight for the troops to freak them out so that from the first day, their bowels would be water. This guy came running out of the bush yelling, Hi, Gaza! How was the guy Gaza? And he had that machete raised over his head. All the new recruits turned and looked at him. Robinson looked at me and said, Sir, what's going on? I said, Robinson, tell that man right there that you don't have anything against him. Tell that man right there you don't want to fight no honky wars. Tell that man right there that you're his buddy. Meanwhile, this guy's running full speed machete over his head coming right for us and Robinson says sir do something I said I ain't doing nothing you don't want to fight the war you just talk him out of it uh, he said sir the guy's about 15 feet away from us still coming full speed Robinson grabbed that M16 out of my hands and uh, he stitched him from one side to the other and the guy fell dead at our feet machete clattering over our boots Robinson looked down his eyes wide the blood seeping all over the tarmac I shook his hand I said private Robinson Welcome to Vietnam. And from that day forward, Robinson continued to be one of my best men. He had ears like a hawk. He was always the first one to yell. Incoming! I'll never forget the sight of Robinson there. Football star in high school. Running across those fields. Running across those valleys. Laying down fire. Leading the men. Go, 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 go. You got uh, several purple hearts, the Silver Star, the Distinguished Fighting Cross, and numerous medals from the government of South Vietnam. Th through it all, though, Robinson never lost his compassion. I remember one time we grenaded a machine gun nest. The battle was over. We made our way up there to where the bodies lay. 
One of them had a wallet half and hanging half out of his pocket. Robinson reached down and said, well, maybe there's an address. There's some pictures of his family we could send him. And he reached down. I said, don't touch that wallet, Robinson! Why did you touch that wallet, Robinson?